So I am starting to get ready for my 15 kilowatt um, lithium phosphate um, power wall. And I'm starting to think about how I'm going to hold the batteries, how I'm going to compress the batteries, what accessories will I need for the power wall. And um, I'm starting to do my planning and, and um, it's important to plan these things out, you know, well ahead of time because some parts you might have to order from you know China through AliExpress and that and other parts is just cheaper if you order them from you know AliExpress and that ahead of time and the shipping takes a long time but if you plan it out and order things ahead of time it makes your life a lot easier when it comes time to actually assemble things this here is the rack that I have built for the lithium phosphate batteries now I'm gonna use 16 um, batteries it's going to be an 8s 2p configuration I'll have eight batteries across the bottom eight batteries on the on the second row there um, the reason it's important to plan especially with lithium phosphate is these batteries are heavy this will these batteries will be hundred and eighty pounds and so you know you can't mount lithium phosphate on just on your wall you know or throw it on a on you know like a cheap Walmart shelf um, it's a lot of weight and so um, you need to plan and, and have something um, this is on wheels um, so I can roll it around my garage and I'm going to try and make this self-contained so that the um, the inverter the solar everything is on the shelf um, so that you know when I need to use it I can roll it around my garage and have have power where I need it um, so f now this is you know to make this co as co you know this is going to be this is fairly compact and my inverter alone is going to take this whole space here so I will mount some things on the back and on the sides to make it self-contained but um, let me spin it around I've already started I've already started to lay things out here. Um, you can see I've, I'm starting to visualize where I want things. That's the BMS. That's a DALI 100 amp um, 8S uh, lithium phosphate BMS. Um, and that's going to go into a 150 amp fuse. Um, and then from after the fuse will go the shunt for the meter. And then the power wire can run up to the inverter, which will be at the top here. Um, this is going to be some 12 volt circuitry. Um, let me take you in and and show you this. Um, I'm using one of these automotive style. Um, let me zoom you in a little bit here. I'm using one of these automotive style um, racks, and there's a there's a 12 volt there's a 12 volt socket there. This is USB with a meter over here, and he has a switch. And I've rewired this a little bit. That the 29 volts comes in through the switch as 29 volts then the switch actually sends the voltage into this uh, DC to DC um, 12 volt step down converter and then the 12 volts 29 comes in 12 volt leaves and then the 12 volts goes to both the USB and the 12 volt socket so that I have regulated 12 volts on these two things and actually I can sh I can show you it Turn on my bench power supply. So I have uh, 25 volts going in right now with the bench power supply. The switch turns off the 12 volt circuits and then turns on the 12 volt circuits and you can see we're getting exactly 11.9 volts out of the meter and there's our USBs. Um, so I think that'll be a nice way to have USB off the power wall and um, a 12 volt off the power wall. And then the nice thing is this whole DC to DC and all of this is only currently pulling 0. 0 0.04 uh, amps so we're pulling one watt total right now 25 volts at 0 0.04 amps so we're, we're literally pulling let's see, 
pulling one watt. So that's nice because the standby, then the standby on this is nothing. And on a, you know, again, I can completely turn off the 12 volt circuitry. So there'll be no draw whatsoever off the battery. Um, but I like this design and I think this, this will make it convenient. And again, this area will be my main inverter will sit on top here. And um, I'll hide a lot of the, the meters and electronics on the back here and I'll probably have the solar mounted on the side. Um, and let me show you one more thing about this cabinet. Let me disconnect the power meter. Um, well, two things. Um, those are going to be bus. Those are going to be kind of master bus bars. Um, eventually, voltage will come from the battery up to those, and then I'll use that to distribute power to the 12 volt circuitry and to the meter and anything else that I need. Um, but one more thing that I've sort of been thinking about with this with this box is lithium phosphate likes to be compressed likes a little bit of um, compression when you stack all the batteries in here they're going to want to you're going to want to put a little bit of compression on them um, because they swell under use and the compression helps them last longer um, so originally I actually I thought about maybe using a ratchet strap and I had thought about a bunch of different methods for doing this but um, in the end, I think I have a much better way. I am going to use a screw system. The batteries will stack in here and there'll be about an inch of, of room on the end. I'll put one of these spaces on the end and I will design a screw thread that goes through a piece of wood on the end there. And that screw thread will press on this wooden plate and compress on the side of the lithium phosphate batteries um, just you know not a lot but just enough to hold them under under compression so they when, when they want to swell they can't um, and that will increase the longevity of the batteries but I think that's actually an elegant way to um, compress these batteries you know just have a just have a little a piece of wood there with a with a screw going through it and a, and a nut to so that it, the screw can't go backwards and then you screw this way and um, that'll put compression on the battery obviously I'll make sure that you know there's a piece of metal or something to spread the load and we don't damage the board and damage the batteries and these are cut exactly to the size of the battery um, so that these can be the end caps for the batteries to protect the batteries um, but I think that'll you know that's how I will compress the batteries um, is uh, using a you know a screw mechanism on the side and um, um, I think that's gonna work well I, I've thought about this this box a lot and this is what I've come up with and I think um, it's gonna work well it is So also start to think about all the accessories you are going to need. I have a fully stocked workshop and this is just extra stuff I've ordered for this build alone. Um, first of all, pick your wire size and make sure you have the wire you need. This is 6 gauge Windy Nation um, welding cable and um, it's quite nice. I'm pretty happy with this stuff. Um, so I'm going to be using 6 gauge wire for my build. The BMS itself, um, you saw I already ordered that, that has 7 gauge wire on it. Um, so this is actually slightly thicker, but um, you know, trying to find 7 gauge wire is actually impossible, I looked. Um, so 6 gauge it is, um, and so once you know your 6 gauge wire, you know you're probably going to need some um, crimp connectors, um, so you can crimp wire onto the BMS and, and make your connections. You, you know you're going to need some, some 6 gauge um, eyelets to join to the battery and to the inverter and stuff like that. A couple different sizes. Make sure you have those. Um, you're going to need, um, I, you know, even though I have a bunch of these, I got these. These are slightly, these have a pretty large 
a ring on these. I got these for all the balance wires because I'm going to need balance wires going to all the um, all the the lithium phosphate batteries. So um, I got some of these just to you know put in my um, you know to put in my uh, in my well you know to put in my um, in my storage box so that I have you know whenever I need a large ring terminal I have it. Um, I got some more of my favorite Wago blocks. Um, these will be for the um, balance leads. Um, I'm gonna have the main balance leads coming off the batteries and going into this side of the Wago blocks. There will be nine balance wires, and so I got two fives, so so that I have this ten spaces, but I'll only use nine of them. So I'm gonna have the balance wires coming in, and on this side. I'll have one set of wires going into my BMS and I'll have another set of wires going going externally so that I can plug in like my ISDT or my iCharger X8 or something like that. So this will this will allow for my external balance wires um, so I can plug in a RC charger. So that's why I'll be using the Wago blocks and that's why I got some 8S um, balance leads here. Um, some switches, just in case I want to wire any, um, you know, in case anything needs, any low voltage stuff needs to be switched. Um, these are M6 stainless steel studs. Um, lithium phosphate batteries um, often come with nuts that hold the bus bars down. Oh, sorry, bolts that hold the nut, the bus bars down, and if you're careful, if you're not careful, those nuts can actually um, crack the the battery casing. So a lot of people suggest using studs instead, and um, so I pre-ordered the studs. This 50 studs was I think four dollars um, from AliExpress. So you know, trying to buy 50 M6 studs at a Home Depot would probably cost you a hundred dollars. Um, so. You know, again, think about what you're going to need and order it ahead of time. So that's my studs. It has stainless steel nuts and stainless steel washers to go with, um, you know, to um, to hold down the, the the bus bars and the balance wires. Speaking of bus bars, here are extra bus bars. These are 72 millimeter bus bars. Why do I need extra bus bars if there are bus bars coming with the batteries? Well, if you do the math, um, they send one bus bar per battery that you order. That is enough bus bars to do a series configuration with your batteries. But it is not enough bus bars to do any form of parallel configuration with your batteries. And since I'm doing a 2P8S configuration, I am going to have parallel connections. And I'm gonna need extra bus bars to make the parallel connections. So I got some extra bus bars. Um, fuses. Uh, you can see I've I actually got a two pack of these. So I mounted one's already mounted on the on the back of the case. But you know a main a main fuse just to be safe. Um, a meter. Um, this is the same meter that I have in my um, that I have in my. Um, Lithium ion power wall, and I like this meter a lot. And here's its 100 amp shunt. So the shunt will go next on the back of the case after the fuse, um, so that we can take measurements of any of the incoming solar and the outgoing inverter charge. Um, also got a couple banana jacks. Um, I was considering having um, 12 volt power available through a couple banana jacks. Um, um, so that if I, you know, if I wanted some 12 volt power, I could. Um, plug in a banana plug or just simply you know slide a raw wire in there and crimp it down and I would have access to 12 volt power um, I don't know you know th this was honestly before I bought that automotive style 12 volt accessory strip that I showed you earlier so I don't know if I'll install the banana plugs but uh, always good to have some banana plugs um, oh and probably lastly is this beast this is a um, my wall charger for this power wall it is 29.2 volts at 10 amps a lithium phosphate 8s configuration will come out at 29.2 volts a lithium ion 7s configuration will come out at 29.4 volts 
So this is specific to um, lithium phosphate. And this actually does have, you know, constant current and a charge curve in it and that. And so these aren't bad for charging a, a power wall off the mains. Um, and I specified an XT60 connector. Um, um, they, when you order this, they ask what kind of connector you want. And I specified an XT60. And I'll um, make sure that somewhere I have an XT60 jack to plug into the batteries to... Um, if I need to do some wall charging, but I will be using my existing Make Sky Blue solar charge controller off my existing power wall and my existing um, 2500 watt uh, WZ RELB um, power, you know, pure sine wave inverter. I'm going to steal those off my existing lithium ion uh, power wall and put them on this lithium phosphate power wall. Um, so, yeah. You know, not that exciting of a video, but I just want to show you all the things you need to start to think about when you start to build your power wall because it's all these little things that not only cost a fortune if you're trying to order them at the last second or go pick them up at Home Depot, but some of these things you're not going to easily find. Uh, you're not going to find six gauge copper lugs, nice ones at Home Depot. Um, you know, so order these things ahead of time so they're in stock, so that nothing's going to slow you down when you when you uh, start to assemble the power wall. Um, anyways, um, hopefully my batteries arrive um, within the next couple weeks, and I guess the next video will be you know sort of unboxing the batteries and probably paralleling them up, and um, um, you know putting a charge on them and seeing what we get. So uh, I will see you then.